Hey guys, just wanted to give you a little update today on what I'm going to be doing. Right now I'm getting ready to head to Home Depot to pick up a few things that I need to finish some projects that I've got going on. Go figure, I have about 20 at a time, so that's pretty normal. Today I want to get done um, covering my love seat. I've already done the sofa and posted a before and after picture, so I kind of want to give you a, like a fast forward walkthrough I guess of how I did that. Today I also want to get done my ugly green chairs that I had been working on. I've gotten the one gutted down to nothing and I'm starting to add the fabric to it so I will definitely do a tutorial. So stay tuned and don't forget to subscribe below. I want to go ahead and just get started by kind of showing you my setup here. I'm going to be slip covering my love seat today. So let me let me show you the love seat again. Very basic beige couch. If you've seen my previous blog posts, you'll know that we kind of inherited those from neighbors that were moving. When you are young and broke, that's just what you do. We had them professionally cleaned. So here, there's my cute little kitty. Ooh. So here I have my coffee table set up with my sewing machine on it. That just seems to be what works for me as a setup. I know it's not very professional. This is where I'll be doing my magic. And once again, here is the love seat. Here's the finished couch. So let's get started. inside out because eventually it will be right side out after you've sewn so right now I'm just kind of lining up the back hem of this drop cloth with the bottom of the floor and leaving just a little overhang so that I have enough to hem in the seams or to sew the seams paid attention to my sofa slip cover you'll notice that I have this seam here across the couch there really was no way of doing away with that with this size of a drop cloth so and these are these aren't perfect these drop cloths so you can kind of see this run in the fabric which is okay with me I'm okay with a little bit of a rustic look so again here at the corner I'm gonna leave about an inch or two so that I have enough to sew my pieces together so I've got a run here in my fabric which I'm actually gonna use as a guide to cut my straight line drop cloth you've got like a really thin hem which is good kind of bring it in here and kind of show you what I'm doing with the bottoms here so you're gonna have some excess right here and I'll show you how we're gonna attach that and make our pleat like we did on the sofa. So from here I'm gonna cut the piece that's going to cover this area right here. So I found out from covering the couch that the excess that you have left over from cutting your main body piece works really perfect for covering the arm of the chair. So pretty much you just cut the piece in half where the hem that they placed is. Just cut that in half. Again, you're gonna use the, the part that was pre-hemmed as your bottom. 
this is what's going to touch the ground. At this point, it doesn't really matter it, what is front and what is back to this piece because we're getting rid of all of the hems except for that bottom and that bottom doesn't have a right side out. So from this point we're going to do again we are going to match the hem up with the length of the floor. You can match it with the back corner as well. That'll kind of keep everything nice and square. Just match it at that corner. It would help if I had my pens. I like to use these bright ended pins when doing upholstery. It just makes it easier to find the pin, and especially if you drop one on the floor. I don't recommend doing this with a cat in the house. Cordy, you are making this so difficult. we are going to just kind of line up both pieces to make a nice corner. You're going to want to try to stay consistent with the shape of the couch. So making your, your pinning as snug as possible. kind of tucked into the creases of the couch and with people setting on it you want there to be a little bit of give. So from here I'm going to go ahead and cut off the excess and then I'll bring the camera around and show you what I've gotten accomplished so far. So you can kind of see here in this view of my pins kind of outlining the general shape that I need. This seam here is going to sit in that crevice between the back pillows and the armrest. So you can kind of see. I personally like taking the slipcover off and sewing it in sections versus sewing it all at one time and then screwing up the entire thing. I like to tweak it as I go. So I will take this off at this point take it to my sewing machine. So what I have started, it's kind of a long process, I know, but it just made it a lot better. So that is exactly what I'm gonna do. So I have carefully taken my slip cover off of the couch. Another important thing, you wanna make sure that you're sticking your pins in correctly. I did mine backwards this time. I thought I was doing them the right way and I did them backwards. You want them <laughs> to be placed so that you can pull them towards you out as you sew. I clearly don't know top from bottom and did mine backwards. So you wanna make sure that those are placed correctly before you continue on. Another important thing, I am using the Singer Simple 2263 sewing machine. I do recommend getting a heavy duty needle an upholstery type needle and to use a brand new one when starting a project with really thick material. You're gonna have a lot less hassle. I also am using three thread. From here I'm just gonna go ahead and start sewing. I don't recommend this setup with your sewing machine on the coffee table if you don't sew regularly. So I'm just going to follow along my pin line and pull my pins out as I go. That would have been much smoother had my pins been in the right direction. And if you're curious about my sewing machine settings, I am only on a one length and on a single straight stitch. this over there, lay it back on, continue pinning, 
and then work on my next section. So after I have placed the fabric back on the couch after sewing that little bitty section back there, I went ahead and pinned the rest of the way down the, I'll back up here so you can see, down the crease. That will get tucked into the area between the back of the couch and the armrest. And then from here, I went ahead and trimmed down the front of the couch and added in a piece and just kind of pinned out that shape, attaching the two. So from here, I'm gonna go ahead and attach this excess you see right here to this. I'm gonna go ahead and attach that. So I'll show you how to do that. This area back here, I will worry about last. That does not need to be perfect. We have cushions that are still going to be placed on this couch. So I will show you how I do attach this to this and add a pleat. So from here, I'm gonna go ahead and take this piece of fabric and attach it to both this piece here on the side and this upper piece. I'm gonna attempt to make my hem pretty well flush here with this edge of the couch in the front. So you're gonna see that this is really awkward and it's going to need to be cut in some way, shape, or form. So I will start pinning and show you how to do that. I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of match up my two corners here, the outer corner over here and the front corner. And again, remember to have your pins run the direction that you'll be pulling them out when you're sewing on the sewing machine. same steps that I did prior on the other side and any excess fabric that I had between the back and the armrest I just tucked in between so now I will go ahead and cover the cushions and place those and be done so here you can see I finally have both completed don't mind the NFL draft poster that would be my husband we're having a draft party next weekend they are finally done jordy says thank goodness 